start? Good morning, everybody. No, no, Welcome no, to our connecting. Sorry, it's still connecting. Uh, okay. Wait a second. I'll say hello first. Okay, it's we are on the stage now. Okay, great. Okay. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our first session of the day. Um, we have three exciting talks today, and we're going to start with Maryam Husseini from New York University. And her talk is entitled Sidewalk Measurements from Satellite Images, Preliminary Findings. So Mar Maryam, you have 10 minutes, and I'll let you begin now. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Maryam Husseini, and I am a PhD candidate of Urban System at Rutgers and a research associate at NYU Tandon Vida Lab. This research is the result of an exciting collaboration with my colleagues at the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and University of Illinois at Chicago. For many of us living in urban areas, dealing with sidewalk problems has become part of a daily routine. Pedestrian infrastructure has a significant impact on everyday life of people, specifically those with special needs for whom such infrastructures are the primary means of accessing public spaces. Sidewalks are the most important pedestrian dedicated public spaces in the cities and yet, despite all advances, the problem we have with inadequate sidewalks are still more or less the same as they were decades ago. As we can see from these tweets, sidewalks poses challenges to everyday life of people. Narrow sidewalks, sidewalks with obstacles right in the middle of them, the snow accumulating on the surface of the sidewalks, creating uh, slippery uh, surfaces that can become a real hazard. Um, these are the problems that people deal with every day. My research is motivated by the inadequacy of pedestrian infrastructures to answer the needs of different groups of people. It makes walking or rolling a constant struggle. This inadequacy cannot be properly addressed if the extent of the problem is unknown, and any effort to address this problem is limited to available public data sets that, as we can see, is not in a very good shape. According to a research study uh, among the 178 municipalities across the US, only 20% of them had any sidewalk data, only 11% had crosswalk data, and only 8% had um, sidewalk material. Ironically, this data shortage exists in the face of all advances in data collection, with various sensors all around us collecting data in different formats. From tabular data, such as taxi pickup and drop ups to um, 3D building geometry data, to street level and satellite images. One of the main uh, reasons behind this lack of data of sidewalks is the costly and time consuming data collection methods um, mainly for um, the um, built environment features. For human scale features such as surface condition, beads, curvature, and slope, manual or in field audits are still the most widely used method. City scale data such as road networks have for long been mapped using satellite images. When pedestrian accessibility is mapped, it is often done using simplified road center line data, not the actual pedestrian infrastructure sidewalks, food passes, and road crossings. Many models have been developed to detect roads and buildings from satellite images, but the necessary ge um, geospatial data for pedestrian infrastructure mapping and modeling remains far behind the vehicular infrastructure data. Sidewalks have been significantly overlooked in that. This can also be due to the fact that they are very challenging to detect. Sidewalks occupy very narrow areas compared with roads, which occupy uh, much less than 20% of most satellite images, even at high zoom level. And this limited area is often obstructed by bridges, vegetation, or shadow. And different paving materials also makes them more challenging to detect. In this work, we utilize a recently developed semantic segmentation model to detect sidewalks from ortho images and overcome the annotation bottleneck by using the publicly available sidewalk, roads, and building planimetric polygons. We also propose a simple and robust method to measure um, sidewalk properties, such as curvature, angle, and width. And we demonstrate the robustness of our prediction um, despite the prevalent obstruction and shadows in Manhattan. Um, we use two publicly available data in our study 
uh, we use or directified images instead of the raw images. Um, raw satellite images have some inherently uh, distortion um, um, caused by sensor orientation and um, systematic sensor and platform related geometry errors and the curvature of the errors. These distortion can cause feature displacement and the scaling errors, which can result in inaccurate um, direct measurement of distances, angles, and areas. Uh, Orthorectification is a process that removes these distortions and create accurately georeferenced images with a uniform scale and consistent geometry. To create our ground truth annotation, we use planimetric data. Planimetric mapping is also extracting features from the orthoimagery to create maps that only capture the horizontal distance between the features and is then uh, exclusive of elevation. Since planimetrics are created from orthorectified images, they're a perfect choice to create annotation max uh, for a semantic segmentation model. Besides the uh, NYC sidewalk planimetric data, map sidewalks as continuous features if they are visually obstructed by vegetations or structures such as bridges, uh, given that they are visible on both sides of this obstruction. This utility of the data helps in training the model to detect the sidewalks correctly in the face of obstruction. In this study, we used around uh, 50,000 tiles from Manhattan and Brooklyn, and for each tile, um, we use this geographical extent to create an annotation mask from planimetric um, sidewalk roads and building shape files. We then divided that data to 60% training, 20 validation, and 20% test. Um, we used the recently developed hierarchical multi-scale attention model for a task, which helped in extracting the fine uh, level details while taking the image context at different scales into account. The inputs are images from two scales. The network learns the relative attention between the scales and hierarchically apply the rent uh, attention to combine the results from two segmentation heads and make predictions. Each scale is passed through a, the, our backbone, which is the HRNet plus OCR, and uh, we can get the output feature F. The feature uh, then go through two heads, one for attention generation and uh, one for segmentation. Um, so here, we use the train model to extract the sidewalks from unlabeled images. We then do shape analysis um, and um, we apply the shape analysis algorithm to extract the features to produce the indicators. We use the skeletonization technique to measure the attributes of interest. To evaluate the performance of our approach, we also compute each of these indicators for the ground truth annotation labels and um, validate our result against these extracted metrics. The results are the bits, curvature, and orientation of the sidewalks. Here you can see the evaluation metrics of our semantic segmentation model. Sidewalks were detected with 79% intersection over union. And you can see here that the model overall achieved 80% accuracy, um, MIOU, and um, this is over all the considered classes. As you can see, uh, here is our metrics for the um, that we extracted for sidewalks and we bin them. Um, the widest sidewalks have the highest errors of six pixels, but uh, this bin has also like the lowest number of samples in it. You can also see that the highest uh, error in computing angles was less than one degree. This shows the robustness of the method in calculating the angles and same goes for the curvature. Uh, here you can see the predictions of our model over 75,000 tiles that we stitched them together to create the whole picture. And you can see the other metrics um, calculated over them. Here is um, two instances of how the model predicted under the obstruction. As you can see, the trees and vegetation obstructed the roads and sidewalks, but the model predicted them correctly. Um, so our model show a robust performance um, in predicting sidewalks under different conditions, um, including uh, the cases of obstruction. We use publicly available data set to create the ground truth labels to train the model, and we overcome the annotation bottleneck this way. And we offer a simple yet effective technique 
to measure different attributes of sidewalks, and we tested our approach against the ground troops. This paper presented our initial findings, and despite its strong performance, our approach has some shortcomings. The model is only trained on New York City data with a specific street network topology. The attributes are calculated for each tile, and we have not yet aggregated them on the sidewalk segment level. And the attributes are reported in pixels um, that we need further projection and geometric computation to convert the results to more suitable unit. In our future work, we plan to aggregate the measurements on sidewalk segment levels to provide a more informative overview of the sidewalk condition and also create a more generalizable model by expanding the training data to include cities with varying topological characteristics and shadow patterns. Thank you very much for your attention and time. And uh, here is my information. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miriam, for that very interesting talk. I'm sure that in New York City, you really feel like how the quality of the sidewalks affects quality of life for a lot of people. Exactly, yes. Yeah. All right, and just a reminder to everybody that we will do questions after the third presentation. So it is my pleasure now uh, to introduce Hui Lin Han. Uh, who will be speaking on behalf of a project uh, with Morteza Karimzade um, called Classifying Narco-Trafficking Spatial Event Documents Using Transformers. So Hui Lin, take it away. Okay, thank you. And we'll just give you a second here to share your screen. He's right next to that little happy face you've got on the bottom. <laughs> Hello, Kilio. Mm -hmm. yep. Sorry, I lose my connection. Uh, can I share my PDF? Um, we were gonna we're gonna do you third, and we're very excited to hear you in about ten minutes or so. Okay. Hi, I just want to verify that I'm successfully sharing my screen. We can see it great. Okay, perfect. So good morning. I am Hui Lin Han from University of Colorado Boulder. I am working with Dr. Morteza Kamzade. I am a senior undergraduate in computer science, and we are collaborating, co collaborating with Beth Tillman and Eric Nelson. And today I will be presenting our preliminary work on classifying narco-trafficking spatial event documents using transformers. So the abundance of textual documents and the rapid development of natural language processing provides great opportunities for geotext analysis, utilizing the resource of textual documents to generate data with high spatial temporal coverage but this also presents the challenge of low signal to noise ratio information, which is seen when we try to retrieve documents containing spatial temporal events of interest with queries. Such documents only constitute a very small percentage of the corpus. So um, if we want to use, um, for example, named entity recognition methods for extracting entities such as times and locations, we need strategies to efficiently filter unstructured textual documents. And an approach for this is using machine learning for semi-supervised learning and classification. So um, we would like to use machine learning for filtering documents with spatial temporal events. However, there's a shortage of local treated training data for this purpose being a challenge in some domains. So we can leverage pre-trained models such as BERT, which allow us to fine tune models with limited training data to learn the downstream tax, tasks of separating documents containing spatial temporal event descriptions with other documents close in the semantic space. And our work is related to the domain application of studying impacts of narco-trafficking using Spanish news media data in which a recent study found that narco-trafficking events documented in news media data 
has a wide coverage and makes up for coverage in some areas where official databases are lacking information. And the data is also spatial temporarily correlated with the events in official, official databases. So in this study, we will present preliminary work on a classification approach using fine tuning a pre-trained transformer model to detect spatial temporal narco-trafficking events in Central American Spanish news. For our data set, we used a manually labeled data set of Honduras news media reports of drug trafficking events. This data set was generated by querying initially with a list of narco related keywords. And then the filtering was done by domain experts to determine which articles contained um, information of time, location, and drug trafficking related attributes. And for this study, we took the reports from the newspaper La Prensa Honduras for our training purpose. And since this data set was not initially retrieved with the purpose for training machine learning models, so it did not include negative examples, we retrieved the negative examples afterwards by querying with the same keywords and excluding those within the positive data set. The difference between positive and negative examples is that positive examples describe narco trafficking events, they include information on location, time, personnel involved, type of drug, amount trafficked, and so on. While negative examples still contain narco-trafficking keywords, but they do not document events. events. For models, we fine-tuned two different bird structured models for classification. They have similar structure, and total amount of parameters. One of them is Beto, which is a Spanish specific model that has reached state of the art of multiple Spanish NLP benchmarks, while multilingual BERT is trained on a corpus of 104 languages, including Spanish. And we updated all the pre-trained model parameters using our, data, our training set. So in training, since domain experts prioritize recall over position, so we set the penalty of misclassifying positive examples six times higher than negative examples using a weighted binary cross entropy loss function. And also since initially in the collection of the data set, the negative examples were discarded, so we did not have statistics on the negative to positive example ratio Therefore, we experimented with multiple negative to positive ratios within our training and testing. For evaluation results, our results are promising. The model is at least 90% successful in flagging documents that contain spatial and temporal attribute information on trafficking events. Although all the examples in the set were related to narco trafficking and um, we see that both models are performing relatively well with the highest F1 of 0 0.88, but multilingual S is seen to slightly out outperform beta with higher recall. And the 60 to 1 higher penalty for positive examples made oversampling of negative examples unnecessary in our case because the best results, as we can see, are coming from the, run are coming from the runs with 1 to 1 negative to positive ratios. And some of the variations in metrics can be attributed to the fact that we have a relatively small testing set. And with closer qualitative examination of our results, we can determine that for one thing, the model was classifying the examples correctly, and also that the performance might be better than the statistics indicate because some of the false positives were actually true positives, meaning that they were within the negative data set, but they actually did document drug trafficking events with spatial temporal and attribute information, except that they were absent from the original positive data set, which is an interesting result. And in conclusion, 
Our results show that fine tuning a BERT model allows for accurate and efficient identification of documents containing spatial temporal events, even in cases such as our study where all documents were closed in semantic space, all related to the topic of narco trafficking and with a relatively small training data set. And future steps, we would like to see if we can perform accurate spatial information extraction at a fine scale, which is promising because from our results, it seems that the signals in the text associated with spatial temporal descriptions have been detected by the BERT model features. And this work would require annotation of entities within documents, which we will undertake in future research. So that is the end of our presentation. Here is um, Morteza and my contact information. Thank you very much. Quilin, thank you so much for that. Um, I know that extracting spatiotemporal information from text data has been a project very, very near and dear to all of our hearts. And it's adds an extra great layer when it's something that's actionable. Um, so I really, that's such a wonderful presentation. Um, we have a third presenter, Abu Zar, who can join by phone and audio. Um, so if you will, would mind uh, just hanging out a second, maybe refreshing your coffee, we will try to get them up here as soon as possible. And then hopefully we will still have a couple of minutes for questions. All right, we actually will go ahead and take a couple of questions now. And if we are able to have a third presenter in a little while, then we'll move back to that. I'm gonna to turn to the Q&A here. Um, please feel free to unmute yourself and show your camera if you would like to, or just type in the chat that you'd like me to read yours out. Um, we have Hong Yu's question first. I'll go ahead and read this out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, how did we geocode and map the detected events? And what was the biggest challenge for working with a non-English data set? So um, so uh, geocoding and mapping the detected detected events is not part of the work we have done so far, but potentially will do after we do information extraction of location and temporal information from the text. And the biggest challenge for working with a non-English data set was um, the uh, added layer of difficulty for me and Morteza as non-Spanish speakers to verify the uh, performance of our model. Fortunately, we have collaborators who were fluent in Spanish and working in the area. And also for the uh, lower, uh, smaller number of resources in natural language processing, well, Spanish is still a high resource language, but compared to English, there is a relatively smaller a number of resources to um, to leverage for that. Sure. Yeah. Just a follow up question. I saw you uh, included like four maps in the presentation, um, so that's why I asked the first question. And I thought you already mapped those those events, but maybe you can explain a little bit more. Describe a little bit more about what those maps are. Oh, oh, so I see you are referring to the map in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, so that map was from a study uh, done by one of our collaborators on uh, the coverage of Spanish news media data in Central America. Um, and it is a map showing that the events documented in news media data that they uh, studied 
had a higher coverage in some areas than the official databases, uh, which was, and they re leveraged that data to study the effects, the impacts of narco trafficking on uh, deforestation. And that is where the map comes from. Thank you. Okay, we will do two more quick questions and then we'll return to our third speaker. All right, we have a question from Andy Anderson. Andy, you're welcome to unmute yourself, share your um, share your screen or share your camera, and I'll read it out loud. Um, how about crosswalks to Miriam? Ultimately, with a global the goal of providing connectivity between segments of sidewalks. Oh, actually, that's a very good question. And um, in one of my ongoing work, I am working on detecting um, the pedestrian network, actually, like constructing the pedestrian network from satellite images. And sidewalks and pedestrian footpaths are part of them. So um, this is an ongoing work. I am hope I, I hope that I can actually like publish it uh, in a month or two, and we will make it publicly available so it can be used, the model and the weights uh, can be used by others as well. Wonderful, thank you. And then we'll do one last question and then we'll do our third presenter. Um, so we've got Anna here. Um, yesterday, someone mentioned extracting sidewalk data from Google Street View. Have you looked into this for validation? So that someone was myself. Um, this was actually the, um, the work that I have been doing, um, part of my dissertation, actually. Um, so I extracted the material of the surface of the sidewalks um, from state level images. And um, actually, um, uh, I'm not sure what, what you mean for validation, but if you mean that we use um, st uh, like street level images as a validation for the satellite level images, um i think this can be done and there are papers that actually use that um as a kind of uh, validation for these two but not sure how to um account for material from satellite images because uh, there are lots of challenges when you want to detect materials even from the street level images so um it won't give us like a very accurate um estimation like detection of materials if we are going to use the satellite images only yes thank you yeah i, I meant for validation of the satellite and extraction from this street view but that was great thank you okay thank you thank you great wonderful okay and we'll take a, another one from susan Berntor. if you'd like to come on up um to clarify, the ML task was to identify if a narco trafficking event occurred in the documents and the next steps would be to classify the entity relating to those events. Hi, Susan. Mm -hmm. That is a great question. And yes, that's completely correct. Right now, um, for this work, our task was to identify if the narco trafficking event was in the textual document or not. And the next step would be then classifying the entities related to the event. Yes, that is exactly what we are planning to do. Great, yeah, I was just curious because I saw there was a slide where it looked like you had an annotation tool of different entities. And I wasn't sure if you had, if there was a way that you had um, you know, created some scoring where uh, a series of those entities or whatever contributed to making an event or not. Um, but it sounds like, you know, that's the next step or, um, yeah. But anyway, it, great work. It's it, exciting to see your presentation. Wonderful. Thank you for these great questions. We will try one more with Abuzar and then we will probably close up for the day. So Abuzar, I will uh, let you try to share your screen and to join us. And thank you again for these wonderful questions. Thank you, I'm ready. Okay, we can see your screen. Uh, I sent my PDF to Mrs. Carrier, but uh, I wait to share, 
She, her, her screen. I have the presentation. Can you see my AirMeet screen right now? When can I see? Where, where can I see your screen? I so now I'm sharing the presentation. Can somebody give me an audio cue that you can see it? We've got it. Great. I can't see it. Okay, go ahead. We're on your title slide. Let's see. Uh, sorry, I can't see it. My screen, your screen. Okay, just go ahead and tell me when to move forward, please. Okay, but uh, I can uh, speak it and you change the uh, page? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Also, it is night here in Iran. Welcome to my presentation. I am Abuzar Ramazani, Assistant Professor of Geospatial Information System from Soviet Jamalit in Asadabadi University of Iran. My article entitled Parking Recommendation Services Using Deep Learning. Next slide, please. Yep. This research aims to provide a new service for a smart cities. A smart city intending to provide qualitative services at reasonable price to all and tries to increase productivity and improve the quality of life of people. Meanwhile, transport, transportation as one of the infrastructure systems play an influential role in providing a platform for creating a smart city. The use of information and communication system in your transportation can facilitate and pave the way for this. The smart city is a framework created primarily for information and communication technology to develop, expand, and promote sustainable development practices of urbanization. Next slide, please. Today, 54% of the world's population lives in different cities, which expected to reach 66% by 2050. So, with population growth, urbanization will add another 2.5 billion to cities over the next three decades. Environmental, social, and economic sustainability is one of the most critical points to coordinate with the rapid population expansion and financing of cities. Next slide, please. According to the, uh, to the last, latest research from the Jupiter Institute, it is predicted that implementation of intelligence traffic management and smart parking plans will save about 4.2 billion people hours on, annually by 2021. The Jupiter Institute predicts that by 2021, about 2 million smart parking spaces will be created worldwide due to improve provide and uh, commercial traffic flow. So for using this uh, smart parking, we need to develop a smart services which recommend best parking slot to drivers. Next slide. The main goal of this research is implementing a location-based service for allocating the best parking slot to drivers by analyzing the data obtained by urban cameras. To analyze camera images, a new convolutional neural network is developed. Using the proposed model, the parked cars are identified by comparing the, to the base map and empty parking slots are determined. Next slide, please. The data used in this research are provided by the International Society of Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing for POSTA. The spatial resolution of the data are five centimeters and the dimension of, dimension of each vertical aerial image is 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. Next to each vertical image, a ground reality map is labeled in several classes such as building, cars, short plants, trees, etc. And we have used the image containing the car class label. Next slide, please. You can see the data which used in this research. In the left, we have the original image, and in the right, we have the labeled image. 
Next slide, please. Totally, 2,920 images were created in three band with dimension of 520 by 520, where 2,420 images are used for training and 484 images are used to evaluation. To process and implement the conventional neural network, the Google Colab system based on Python programming language has been used. The initial processing without using network pre-training is estimated to take about three days. Next slide, please. The conventional neural network is designed of encoder-decoder type which according to the nature of this design, first, the dimension of the image are reduced and its depth uh, is increased. In the second part, the reserve process is applied again, and finally, the estimation map is made with the dimension of the input image. The main difference of this research with previous research is we do not improve the detection precision of parked cars, but also we use deep learning to recognize empty parking in aerial image and use it as input for another service. Review of previous research shows that the innovation of those research was about increasing the detection precision and some research reached to 97% precision. In this research, if 90% of the car recognize and declare the field parking, we can use this model because the goal of the goal is not recognizing the car, but is determining which parking is empty and recommend it to drivers. Next slide, please. After using the deep learning to identify vacant parking lots, a model with piecewise calculation is developed. In this model, the position of empty parking, parking slot is calculated by specifying the position of the filled parking and matching the output of the previous step with the parking map. For spatial analysis, the center of the parking slot is con considered as the parking indicator. And then the parking and the, the best parking lot with the shortest path is suggested to driver. Next slide, please. Best parking is calculated best based on some parameters, such as next destination of driver, the walking distance to target, and distance between car and target, and so on. Here, you can see the final pass, which indicated to driver and empty parking. By using this model, we can reduce the waste time of people for finding empty parking and so help to reduce the traffic of such cars. Next slide, please. Thank you. For, for your attention, and my uh, colleague Muslim helped me uh, in the developing conversion neural networks, and uh, you can uh, he can uh, help me to uh, uh, respond to your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abuzar. It was wonderful to hear from you. Um, we are at the end of our session, and I'd like to invite the speakers and all of the participants to join in our coffee hour talk. And so perhaps we can have some more discussion and question there. Thank you all so much to the speakers and the organizers for a great session. Thank you. Thank you.